One of the things that you want to consider when identifying a space is what type of instrumentation you'll need, what type of laboratory you want, what your specimen type will be, and really uh, how many samples you plan to receive. So different types of testing require different types of environments. Uh, for molecular work, you're going to need a couple of different spaces, usually divided by a wall for your post-amp and, and pre-amp processes. For toxicology and general chemistries, you may only require one open space. So based on the type of testing that you're going to perform, that really defines how the layout within that lab space should be. And then um, you know, you'll want to start looking at certain things like your upfit, uh, what will it take to build a wall if that's the particular space that you like for your lab. Sometimes you can build a space and modify the current space to make it work for your lab. We've also seen laboratories that require one large open space, um, kind of modify it in a way to where they break down those walls. So you can modify your space, but sometimes it's easier just to select the space initially based on the type of sample that you'll be utilizing. Just as your molecular space may require two separate rooms, you'll also want to consider a certain type of an outfit for a toxicology lab. So again, based on the type of testing that you're wanting to do, that will really change the structure of the lab itself. For a toxicology laboratory, you're going to be looking for a robust enough electrical capacity, as you'll probably have quite a few instruments plugged in at once. The LCMSs, which are traditionally used for toxicology applications, pull a lot of energy. So you'll want to make sure that your building can really withstand that. Uh, for molecular, you'll want to make sure, again, that you have those two separate rooms, uh, really to just avoid contamination. That's the whole point of separation there. Uh, you don't want cross-contamination and you do want uh, a unilateral workflow. So once you leave one room, you don't want to enter that room again. So you'll want to make sure that the space itself can be modified to accommodate uh, a unidirectional workflow. One of the other items that you might want to consider for your laboratory is the overall HVAC system. A lot of laboratories have one HVAC system that feeds into the entire building. This can be problematic because if that particular HVAC system is on in the winter time, it's heating the rest of the building, it's heating those office spaces, sometimes that causes a lot of heat to be pulled into the laboratory. So the instruments themselves uh, tend to keep the room very, very warm. So a lot of times you'll want to separate and have a separate HVAC system for your laboratory. Um, another good thing to do with the HVAC systems and, and something to consider is if you are in a building that has a timer on your HVAC system, sometimes when everyone from the administrative side of the building leaves, that HVAC, that air conditioning system will time out. So you need to make sure that you have consistent temperature 24 seven, the air conditioning stays on and it keeps the lab cool. In addition to assessing the overall HVAC system, one of the things that you should consider is the overall lab space and how many windows are included. You don't want a lot of windows within the lab space because it additionally makes it really difficult to cool the space. Uh, another thing that you want to look for is just general flooring. You don't want carpet in a lab, it's really difficult to mop, so non-porous flooring is the best. It doesn't need to be super fancy, but you, you want to pull that carpet out, uh, and you certainly don't want cement flooring. So um, some, some sort of a tile is usually sufficient for lab applications. Depending on the type of lab that you have in your application and the type of samples that you'll be running, some of that equipment is very large. So you'll want to consider that when you're selecting your space. Are the doorways wide enough? If you have a lab and it's at a top level, you want to make sure that the elevator is robust enough to house that equipment so that you can move it upstairs. It's very hard to move instruments upstairs utilizing stairways. So you want to make sure that you have access to an elevator if it's on a second floor or above. Um, another thing that you'll want to make sure of is the width of the hallways. Sometimes even though the equipment may be able to enter in through the front door, you're not able to get it through the hallways into the actual lab space. So it's a good idea to check to make sure that if you don't have wide enough hallways that you're able to break down some of those walls and kind of open them up so that you can move in your equipment. A lot 
lot of laboratories will have both a LCMS and an analyzer for toxicology applications. They may even have an analyzer for general chemistry applications. One of the things to consider there is based on the analyzer size, a robust analyzer will require a water source. So you'll want to make sure that the building has a water source. You can usually utilize a bathroom that's close by. Placing that connection to the bathroom's current drainage is usually sufficient, um, but having access to that water supply close by is very important. Highly sensitive instruments, such as LCMSs and sequencers, should be built away from rail yards or any other industrial setting that has a lot of vibrations. Those are not going to be great for the instrument, so you'll want to find an area that's free of vibrations, free of heavy industrial settings. With LCMS applications specifically, there are uh, vapors that come from the instrument. So just a tiny amount of vapors that will need to be pushed through the exterior of the building. Sometimes that's very challenging if a room is within a big facility and central to the location. So if you have a laboratory, you're going to want to make sure that you have easy access to the exterior of the building to implement that uh, very simple ventilation needed for the LCMS. The process of buying and starting a lab can be stressful. So I hope that these tips help. With that said, we as a company have 18 years experience setting up hundreds of labs. So we'd be happy to help you with any needs that arise during your lab's journey. We are Lighthouse Lab Services and it is our job to make quality lab testing more accessible. Like and subscribe to see more great info on running the lab, industry insights, and more.